Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever side of the world that you are living on, let me welcome you, welcome you to this place that I call the mental house. But this is a positive mental expression today, and today I want to talk about somebody that I think he deserves um, a little recognition during black history. A lot of y'all don't know that, you know, Milwaukee, Wisconsin is like the fourth worst city for African Americans. It is the most segregated, one of the most segregated cities in these United Snakes of America. Okay? Okay. A city who used to have so much history and who used to have such a vibrant and active black community, like Bronzeville, and um, a lot of people I talk to now when I give them the history, a lot of them don't even know that we lived downtown on Plankington, all those areas. See, but we own property from that area going on up going north so when you look at the condition of Milwaukee right now it is really sad and I can probably say the same thing for a lot of cities except a lot don't have the serious racial component like we do here and for all y'all you know that love the Milwaukee Bucks and For what it's worth, here we got a city that's named after Milwaukee. Milwaukee's population is majority black. And I ain't talking about the outskirts. I'm talking about the city of Milwaukee itself. Okay? And none of that money trickles over to the real Milwaukee. It just stays right downtown in a little pocket that's full of... um, Caucasian people and Caucasian businesses, all the money that they generated during the playoffs, winning a championship, none of that money, hardly any of that money trinkled itself over to the city that the, that the basketball team is named after. Because it's not the Oshkosh Bucks, it's not the Green Bay Bucks, it's not the... um. You racing bucks, <laughs> even though that's another black town. I mean, it is the Milwaukee Bucks who has the biggest uh, black population of all the states. I mean, cities here in Wisconsin, which are only about four black cities. I would say Kenosha, Racine, Bloy, who have the largest population of African Americans. Uh, Madison, Madison um, doesn't have that many because it's a uh, college town however milwaukee has the biggest concentration of black folk in wisconsin they named the basketball team after a city but they don't want to give city the city they don't want us to recoup you know hardly none of those finances that the milwaukee bucks have generated to the town to the city of milwaukee that they named after and I think that, to me, is one of the biggest signs of the, of the racist mindset that's here. We only got a black mayor three, uh, when, when did Joe Biden come into office? Th- uh, three, f- four years ago, and the only reason that Barrett st- uh, is not mayor, and he could he could have just ran to his lights fell off, It's because he was very weak, but he got a job with Joe Biden in the in the cabinet in the you know for Joe Biden. I think he's a ambassador someplace, okay. And that's why he decided to let go of his uh, seat of being the mayor of Milwaukee. It was getting too rough. He couldn't do nothing about it, and he was like, "I can't make effective no change." But these people gonna keep voting me in. So that's a problem, okay? Anyways, 
with that being said, because I can't blame it all on, I'm not blaming anything. I'm just saying the political will here is very minimal, okay? And most black folk don't believe that uh, all politics are local, so we have a hard time. They're very interested in the national but they're not very lo uh, interested in the local. And that's why they have to be worked on. Um, and so um, we have Cavalier Johnson, who's just serving his first term. He's the incumbent now. He's about to run again. And um, he's running against a bunch of tools for white supremacy. Because, you know, white people have all kinds of resources at their disposal. Even black people that are willing to sell the whole community out, uh, black people that get bags under the table that are willing to do whatever needs to be done, that the power structure remains the same. Those are the people that are um, running. King and all the rest of them. Look, I don't even want to talk about them uh, anymore. What I wanted to say, this is a positive uh, video, at least it's supposed to be. And that's talking about this young man who I have a lot of respect for. When he came to Milwaukee, he he noticed it instantly. That damn, this city is pretty segregated, huh? And he was right. And let me tell you about Matthew, uh, I mean, um, let me tell you about Malcolm. And now he plays for the Portland Trail Blazers, but a lot of y'all know he started his career in Milwaukee. Him and Giannis Antetokounmpo made a very, very good tandem, and I wish they could have stayed together. I hate that he got traded. He got traded to Indiana first. And um, he, Milwaukee, I guess, didn't think after that contract that he was worth it. Um, after the rookie contract, they didn't they didn't keep him. But he was born into a very educated family. Okay, his dad, um, Mitchell Gino Brogdon Sr., is a lawyer and a mediator. He is well known for hosting the syndicated court show, Personal Injury Court. Okay, and then on the other hand, he got his mother, Dr. Jan Adams, and she was the former chief of the psychology department at Morehouse. Okay? This is his pedigree. Now, uh, Malcolm's mother also serves as an associate dean of science and math. Uh, when Brogdon, though, was 11, his parents divorced. Okay? In addition to Malcolm, is the second of three siblings. Um, um, his sister, Chelsea played volleyball at Rice University while his younger brother, Gino, played basketball at the University of Central Florida. Okay, that being said, um, and Malcolm is married to his wife, uh, Victoria, and they are proud parents of a little girl. Okay, and another thing I didn't know is that, on the other hand, he's distantly related to Queen Latifah. Now, Brogdon earned the, the moniker, especially when he played uh, for the Bucks as the president, and that was owing to his professional demeanor and possession of a master's degree in public policy, which he obtained from Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy at the University of Virginia. Okay? Now, what's very interesting... When he came here, he noticed something. And so Milwaukee couldn't keep him very long. I'm I'm just going to be honest with you. He he couldn't play for the Bucks very long. Okay? And a lot of y'all know why. Because the first thing he did was he went to the press and he said, Wow, I didn't know that Milwaukee was so segregated. I didn't know it was as segregated as it was, as it is. And 
I mean, this needs to this needs to really, really be changed. Which was one of the reasons why the owners of the Bucks sold the team. Man, I ain't talking about Herb Cole. Uh, I'm talking about the ones who bought it from Herb Cole and that that group. They made a statement. They was like, "Wow, we didn't know that this place was so segregated." Now, here's the part that gets me. Milwaukee gets very embarrassed and very angry when someone it's says crazy. that about um, their beloved Milwaukee. Yet and still, nobody is willing to do anything about it. How does that work? Nobody's willing to challenge the status quo and how things are done and ran here in Milwaukee. For a city to have um, a larger black population, African-American population that it has, there's no way in hell it should be as segregated than it is. And that's just the truth. But I respect Matthew Brogdon, and I I really want to thank him for exposing that on every opportunity that he had while he was in Milwaukee about just how he couldn't believe how segregated that it was. And he did his best to make himself visible and worked in the community, um, which I thought was just, you know, it was magnificent. Him and uh, George Hill did a lot in the African-American community, and the Bucks were really lost in a community when they, when they left. Now, I'm not saying the ones that want to protect the status quo that weren't as visible in the community, that wanted to play it safe. Uh, I'm talking about George Hill and Matthew Brogdon. And so for this history month, I also want to recognize them for taking time for young with young black males for um acknowledge acknowledging and trying to break barriers and knock loose glass ceilings for the city of Milwaukee. I appreciate that work. Okay? Because it didn't go unnoticed. At least not by me. So with that being said, I want to thank them brothers and just give them their due respect during Black History Month. And with that being said, if y'all like what y'all hear, leave a comment below. I love to engage with you when you comment. So I'm, I'm encouraging y'all instead of emailing me to just leave a comment. And... I will definitely, definitely engage with you. And y'all know I made mention of it on the, in an earlier video that we having a contest coming up. And this contest is to see who's been rocking with me the longest. And we are going to have some cash prizes for um, uh, uh, the grand winner and a secondary prize for... Um, that runner up okay so with that being said if you like what you hear subscribe and share the channel i'll see you in the next video Ooh.